When compared in isolation, VO2 max is one of the strongest predictors of longevity there is. For example, if you were to compare it with someone with a low resting heart rate, that could be artificially low if they're taking beta blockers, which is a heart medication. When you look at the mortality data on VO2 max, there was a big study back in 2018 using 122,000 participants. And when they compared people with elite VO2 max, so that's uh, in the top 2.5 percentile against the bottom uh, 25th percentile, so that bottom quarter, they saw a five-fold increase in all-cause mortality, those people in that bottom quarter, which certainly is a wild number when you think about it, making cardiorespiratory fitness a biggest risk factor than smoking, anything like that, diabetes. And what I'd be willing to bet is that top 2.5 percentile, the elite, the measuring, if you're to isolate the ones with the lowest uh, inflammation levels, the ones that are training the smartest to have that elite VO2 max, I think that difference, that, that five-fold decrease in mortality risk would be higher still. And that's what this video is all about, trying to find the best of both worlds. So I'm gonna share my VO2 max journey results from over the years and reveal my training routine that doesn't drive up inflammation from overtraining and tying it into biological aging too. And on that subject, I recently tested my VO2 max and this is using Ventrijet, so it's 85% accurate, but with a 1% precision. So with that same person, you can get uh, the same results with uh, within 1%. And looking at mine, I'm 46.9 kilograms. So that puts me in the high category. And if you look at my age group, that is uh, some kind of in that high range. And obviously I'm 39, so you argue, oh, well, yeah, I'm right at the top of that age group. But I don't look at chronological age as much as I should because remember, if you're trying to, you're not trying to be age expected and VO2 max from the age of 30 onwards, it declines by on average 1% per year. That's if you're not training. So the device works by measuring vibrations coming from your heart, transmitting it through your chest wall. And this is done with uh, in, in association with Performance Pro. And this is a gym uh, my company's collaborating with in the heart of uh, London's retail district, Oxford Circus. And it's uh, we're doing an article together as well um, with The Telegraph, one of the UK's biggest newspapers. And it's, we've recently started a testing process with our journalists for a big article, seeing how much reversal can happen, not just in their VO2 max, improving their fitness age, body composition too, we're measuring that, but also at the Danunan pace of aging, which is the most scientifically validated clock out there. And out of the 19 bar markers, uh, a couple of really powerful ones is uh, cardio respiratory fitness as well as uh, FEV1. So that's how much air you can expand in one second. And out of those 19 bar markers, those are the two most simple to fix, on paper at least anyway, because some people really struggle with pushing their cardio hard. I'm one of those people, in fact. And so that gets me onto my training routine and uh, how I've actually managed to improve my VO2 max over the years. Another measurement I've done, this is uh, a last did a 2K run, this was in February 2023, and I managed to do it in seven minutes dead on the treadmill, and comparing that to my time when I was 23, so in 2009, I was, uh, so my two VO2 maxes compared using the Cooper's uh, test, and that's looking, so it just calculates using time, so you just reverse engineering the Cooper's test, which is done over 12 minutes. So when you compare that, my time uh, back uh, no, just over two years ago, I was uh, my VO2 max was 45.5, which does tally up, kind of correlates with my improvement with now. I'd say I'm a little bit fitter than back then. So, but when, when I compare with my 23 year old time, 2009, I was 61.4. So there's a big difference there. So I was definitely in the elite category back at that age. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different bar markers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. I speak to a lot of people and like myself, fitness is definitely a hard area to maintain. And so yeah, that's what people often ask me, like, so what can I do in between tests to optimize things? And yes, fitness is, but measuring it and that's why I'm so keen on doing things to uh, to boost fitness and make it easier for yourself. And that uh, gets me onto my training routine. So I only do the bare minimum really expected for cardio, three 20 minute 
uh, cross trainer sessions a week. And so I get myself, I'd say into that high zone three category. I'm reading subtitles on the news. So that gives me stability when I measure how many calories I can uh, output during that session. If I'm able to confidently read those subtitles going as hard as I can, that gives me a comparison over months and years. But as an added benefit, by watching the news, I'm less likely to get bored when doing my cardio, so it becomes less of a chore. I did, I've noticed a big difference over this last year by, uh, by really getting into it, having the right music that motivates me, and even fixing deficiencies like I had an acetyl-L-carnitine deficiency, and what that can help with is uh, dopamine receptor sensitivity, the, in particular D1 and B, D2, uh, improving the, the, uh, the density of them, and so that can help with motivation, making exercise seem like less of a chore. Well, yes, there are other performance enhancers I take to improve VO2 max. That's a whole separate video in itself. And I will be doing an update stack video on everything I do for longevity, breaking it down into anti-aging drugs, supplements, and skincare too. But this video is about improving the basics and fixing those nutritional deficiencies is a must. And so, yeah, my uh, slow and steady kind of routine over time is helping improve my VO2 max. While yes, doing HIIT training would improve that faster, but there's a, it's a double-edged sword because when you train too hard, that drives down heart rate variability. And so that's, uh, obviously I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I don't wanna change things too drastically because my heart rate variability is going from strength to strength. It's improved, I, I managed to get up to 109 last year and now when I last checked, I was 117. I had a big dip over winter because of cold weather in particular, driving up, you know, stresses in my body, my, uh, sympathetic nervous system my body is having to adapt to it so i'm ne this winter i'll make sure to try and uh, improve that keep my house temperature a little bit warmer that kind of thing but yeah so hrv i really like that measurement too as it just indicates if you're overtraining. and so that gets me on to one thing i can do apart from so not doing hit but uh, doing that 2k run and doing it say every four to eight weeks in that kind of region because it definitely does um, drive down heart rate variability and your resting heart rate will go up post doing that. It really does stress out your body. Your airways are completely lit up, oxidized. So yeah, I do get that a lot between tests. What can I do to optimize things? How do I know things are going in the right direction? So HRV, very important, is a marker, not of just fitness, but stress too. And that's both psychological and physiological stress. And so, yeah, they, they will go up over time. A resting heart rate will come down. And uh, yeah, the other things is like visceral fat. I mentioned body composition earlier. So uh, visceral fat, your fat around your organs, it's there, it's basically a protective organ in itself to protect you from blood glucose spikes. And so when that runs out, that's when your gut starts to expand and then you get diabetes. And so, yeah, measuring that, I, I've done that using InBody and that was with Performance Pro as well and that is 98.5 percent as accurate as a dexter scan so it's very accurate stuff and when i measured around two to three weeks in between i was uh there, there was i was basically the same i'd actually put on a little bit of weight around about a kilo and my fat had gone up from 5.9 to six percent body fat which is very very close to when i measured it a year ago doing nine caliper measurement i was 4.9 percent and so, yeah, I'm going to do that soon and just see if, because I have put on around two kilos over this last year of pretty much lean muscle, but I'm going to be very interested to find out what my uh, caliper measurement is in comparison to this. And on that subject, in that in-body test, my visceral fat was the lowest it could be at one. And other markers of health is obviously metabolic health. So your fasting glucose is very important, keeping that uh, down low. And then that obviously impacts, you know, that's a marker of metabolic health. So over time, you can see that coming down. Another important factor of metabolic health is blood pressure. And you've even got wearables now like Whoop, where they've released an estimation on your blood pressure. And on that subject, estimation wise, it gives you an estimate of your VO2 max. And mine has come up from 47 over in March. It's gone up to 48. It stayed at that so far. So very close to what the event trajectory is coming out with. And interestingly, clients of mine have reported back that uh, Whoop can, for some people, can even underestimate VO2 max when they do a proper VO2 max test. So to summarize, I'm going to continue doing my three 20 minute cardio sessions a week, not over pushing myself and then doing the occasional 2K blast 
as and when my body is primed for it to minimize uh, damage and not to drive down HRV. And then it's, I'm not a productivity geek, but so I'm getting a data, I'm doing testing as well as boosting my VO2 max at the same time. So if you like that video, then check out this one on B-methyl and Activegan. So it's an anti-hypoxic stack. It's not even banned by WADA and it has slight nootropic benefits as well as being an antioxidant too. And here's another on meldonium and hypoxin, another cardio boosting stack that uh, again has antioxidant properties, not for just boosting physical performance, but even skin healing, recovery, everything. Thanks for watching. See you next time.